Hello, everyone. My name is Nicola Paolucci. I'm a developer advocate at Atlassian, where I talk about emerging technologies, uh, new paradigms, ecosystems, and uh, code collaboration. And today for you, I have um, uh, sort of an overview of the new developments in the Docker ecosystem. So I call this presentation Docker Triad, so composing the future, where um, I see, I, I explain how Docker is evolving from something to package an application and to easily distribute it to uh, a set of tools to orchestrate and distribute um, loosely or tightly coupled applications. Before I start, obviously, I want to give you a refresh about um, what, what's Docker. So if you're not familiar with, with the craze uh, of Docker in recent months or in the past couple of years, let me give you a brief overview about what Docker is. And uh, so Docker uh, is many things, and obviously the scope of the project is ever expanding, but uh, it can be summarized as being more or less four, four things, four concepts. First one is a common format, uh, so sort of a packaging format uh, on how, how to package an application, uh, a cloud application, a server-side application. That's one thing that Docker is. The second thing is um, a sort of a lightweight uh, suggestion and uh, uh, a way to link applications and containers together. So once you have packaged your application, you can expose some of the ports that the application uses, some of the volumes that the application uses to other containers or to the uh, outer host. Third, Docker is a, has a means to cache previous building blocks of your application. That is, you can reuse earlier steps of your uh, uh, crafting of images. So you can reuse the same technology stack without having to rebuild it uh, every time from scratch. And fourth, Docker provides a, a central repository, so a registry, uh, a global namespace where you can store, if you want, uh, your applications, or obviously you can host your own private registry as well if you need it. This is one way to look at what Docker is. Uh, there's another uh, way that is contrasting it with what um, virtual machines are. So um, in modern cloud-based development and deployments, uh, a very popular choice is to package your application and then install it inside a virtual machine which is a model that has been working quite effectively, but uh, comes with some drawbacks. Uh, and the main drawback being uh, you're always shipping an entire virtualized operating system whenever you distribute uh, an application running inside a virtual machine. So together with uh, your, your app, which can be, which might be only just a few megs, you're actually shipping a virtual uh, Ethernet driver. Uh, operating an entire operating system with all the binaries and libraries and, and statically linked uh, C libraries that the, an operating system needs. And maybe that that's overkill, right? So, <laughs> and if that's the case, that's how my Docker came about. And uh, so uh, the Docker engine is a, is a process that uh, sits on top of a single host operating system and it's allowed to run in isolation these especially packaged containers. So to the container itself, the container itself sees only its own process running, it has access to a very special layered uh, uh, file system, and it, but the container itself, the application running inside the container, container itself thinks it has access to an entire machine. Uh, the pro of this is that obviously containers start up at an incredibly fast speed because they don't need to boot up an entire operating system. And obviously, you can package many more containers in a single host than you can package virtual machines. So that's my very brief introduction to what Docker is. But today, I want to tell you about the evolution of Docker. So starting from this fantastic new abstraction and concept right, of packaging and isolating cloud applications in their own namespace and in the, with their own format and with their, their own caching methodology and layering 
people started building more complex applications. People started using this to build and go towards uh, like a microservices architecture. And so just having a single format, it's very liberating. It's a, it's a big paradigm shift, but it's, um, it's not enough in modern cloud environments. And uh, so the Docker ecosystem is expanding to support more and more use cases as related to orchestrating multiple applications. Uh, a common uh, web application nowadays might have multiple components, uh, might have a database, might have a front end code, might have some access to some static assets, uh, might, have, uh, uh, might need accessing uh, fast key value stores, uh, slower relation on databases. All this needs to be managed and coordinated and linked together in a cohesive unit. And that's where uh, Docker is focusing. Docker teams are focusing their effort right now. And um, they recently announced three new pieces of this puzzle. And I'd like to give you a brief uh, overview of those. So Docker is expanding uh, at least uh, uh, there's three tools that uh, the Docker maintainers are now working towards, and they are in early stages, but they are quite usable already. The first one is Docker Machine, which is a sort of a tool to provision environments both locally and on cloud providers with uh, very simple and streamlined uh, commands. The second tool is Docker Swarm, which is a cluster management solution. Once you have Docker installed on different hosts, you can control them as a unit and you can uh, use constraints to automatically balance and deploy applications to your Docker Swarm. And the third part is a Docker Compose, formerly known as Fig, which is uh, a tool to actually describe how your, the components of your applications should be linked together. And so I would like to give you a brief uh, uh, overview of these three tools, how you can use them with some simple tips, and um, hope you find that useful. So let's just start from Docker Machine. Oh, before I go further, I actually have to uh, make you the remark that the current present state, these tools are in half a stage. So they're not a uh, production uh, level yet. Uh, Docker machine has passed, uh, is right now at the time of me speaking, is uh, version 0 0.1.0, release candidate three. So it's early days, but uh, this, what I'm about to show you, should give you uh, whet your appetite with uh, well, the fantastic, you know, new paradigm that's gonna be the Docker uh, uh, aware swarm. That's coming. So let's start from Docker Machine. So what's Docker Machine? As I said, it's, um, it's a tool, a command line tool that allows you to provision your know, local hypervisors like VirtualBox or VMware uh, and install Docker on them for you, like create a small virtual machine that has Docker installed or uh, just as simply provision uh, cloud providers. And there's many and, and a growing list of uh, cloud providers that are supported and uh, any cloud provider can create their own driver for Docker machine. And it's very easy to use. So I'd like to show you. So for example, the most basic thing you can do is you can create a local dev uh, virtual machine that has Docker ready to go, and then your Docker command will connect to it and run co commands onto it. So you do that by just typing Docker machine create minus D, which is, which is the driver that you want to use. In this case, we want to use a virtual box one, and then the name that you want to give to this machine. So that's a simple way to create, for example, a local uh, host that contains Docker on your virtual box uh, hypervisor. Let's see, uh, it, this works uh, as well with other drivers. For example, the only thing that's needed if you want to create, apart from obviously a Google account, if you want to create uh, a Docker host on the Google Compute Engine, is um, just type Docker machine create minus D, the driver Google, and then reference your Google project name, which you have must have created on the Google admin uh, dashboard 
and this will uh, open up a browser with your OAuth, where you will have to do the OAuth uh, process to authenticate yourself, and then automatically you'll have a machine with uh, Docker provisioned. Obviously, there are some flags you can use to decide how many, which sort of, of processor you want, how much memory you want, on which location data center you want the machine to be um, deployed. But the simplest possible thing you can do is the one you see here on, on screen now. Uh, let me give you actually a demo of how this thing works uh, using DigitalOcean as an example. So if I type Docker LS, um, I show it shows to screen all the Docker machines I have configured locally. And if I want to create um, a DigitalOcean machine, I just type uh, Docker machine create minus D DigitalOcean, and then I need to pass on because I want to deploy um, a Java application that requires a bit more memory, I want to make sure that it has at least two gigs of RAM. And then I need to pa paste in my um, unique cryptographic token, uh, personal token, so that I can it can authenticate me. Obviously, what you see on the screen now, it's expired, so you cannot, cannot use it <laughs> anymore to deploy to my DigitalOcean account. So as you can see, I give it the name pre-production and this goes to DigitalOcean, authenticates me with the access token and uh, provisions a virtual machine with Docker installed um, based on Ubuntu. So this process can take uh, a while. I've, uh, I've shortened it by a few seconds. This is you need to make sure you export some environment variables. So you can ask the Docker machine, how do I connect to that specific environment? So yeah, I typed over machine env pre-production. And those are a few of the, you'll see some of the, yeah, the environment variables that I need to set so that my Docker, local Docker command will connect to that machine. And you see also the IP address of the machine I just deployed. And uh, after I source this environment information, I am done. Um, this Docker images command is now running on digital ocean. There you go. This is what I wanted to demo to you. The second piece of the puzzle is uh, Docker Swarm. And Docker Swarm, I mean, the easiest way to start using Docker Swarm, obviously, is to just pull uh, the Swarm image from the Docker registry. So you type Docker pool Swarm, and you're good to go. And what Docker Swarm is, is a simple tool which allows you to control an entire cluster of Docker hosts and expose it to you as a single virtual host that you can uh, deploy stuff based on constraints. So there is the way you create a swarm is you run the swarm image and you give it the command create. And this will give you a unique cluster identif identifier that then you can use to run all the other commands. Once you have created your uh, cluster ID, you can, you need obviously a manager running either on your local machine or on one of your hosts that can uh, monitor your uh, swarm hosts and that can give it commands and, and use restart policies. So to start managing your uh, swarm, you can give the command swarm manage. You just need to reference your cluster ID that you've just created. And this will, uh, yeah, take note of which nodes are added to the cluster, which nodes are removed, and uh, uh, keep in mind the constraints that your applications need. Once you have uh, the swarm running and your uh, process that is managing them, you can uh, deploy the swarm on each of your Docker hosts and uh, you can tag your host based on constraints. So now here, for example, I'll give you an example. Uh, if, I, if I deploy the Docker Swarm onto a, a host, I can join the Swarm by specifying Swarm join and the token, a unique identifier for my cluster. But I can also la label my current Docker, uh, that, uh, that Docker host with some labels. For example, uh, this specific node might be an SSD, SSD might have an SSD drive and uh, or you can add uh, labels indicating how much RAM a certain uh, 
a certain host might have. And some of those are automatically exposed using Docker info whenever you join a, a cluster, but some that you can be very creative and you can define your own labels. Once you have, uh, once all your hosts have joined the swarm that you're managing, you can finally start applications and uh, um, you deploy applications to the swarm uh, specifying constraints. So you don't necessarily need to anymore saying, I want to run on node three, this application, but you can say, please provide provision for me, a node that ha has an SSD and X amount of RAM and runs on the East Coast. And I want to run on this sort of uh, constraints, I want to run these applications. So that's where the power of the swarm uh, of the Docker Swarm lies. Obviously, uh, this is on top of uh, restart policies and and uh, other uh, load balances, load balancing capabilities, which make Swarm very interesting and uh, um, very useful. So that's a very brief introduction to Docker Swarm, uh, just to give you an idea of what it is. And the third piece of the puzzle in the this new Docker direction is Docker Compose. So Docker Compose, as, as you can read uh, on their documentation page, is a, is a tool that allows you to define multi-container applications in a very simple uh, YML file. Uh, so you specify the number of containers that your application is made of, how to build them if you want, if you need to use uh, an image or if you need to build them from, from source. Uh, which images require which other components and which ports should be open. Once you have described your, um, the relation between the various uh, containers that you want to use, you can, uh, well, obviously the previous name for Docker Compose was Fig, and now this has become, it's going to be renamed to Docker Compose. And once you have defined, um, once you have defined, uh, your Docker Compose YML, uh, you can just start up this uh, uh, network of applications with Fig App or Docker Compose App. And this will take care to, to implement all the requirements that you have described in the YML. So as you can see with these three pieces of the, of the puzzle, Docker becomes much more than just a format to package a single application, but you start to have the tools to install Docker on many hosts, the tools of declaratively deploy your applications on a cluster and describe how your applications should be linked together. And if you put all these three together, you'll get a very uh, nice and compelling uh, um, abstraction over a cloud infrastructure, which is uh, fantastic. It's early days for these uh, these new uh, tools, um, and the Docker ecosystem is moving really fast. Uh, but the progress that has been made is 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 really uh, is really big, and this new paradigm shift of, of containerization of, of our cloud applications is happening. And so uh, the question is not if this is going to become a thing, but it's uh, how much time is it going to take before everybody will use uh, these new tools to deploy applications to the cloud? So personally, I'm very excited by these new developments, and I hope you are too. And you found this useful. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And you can always like send comments uh, to me at, at Durden on Twitter. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, goodbye.